It's back home again for the Colts. After fending off the Falcons, Indy will look to again defend Lucas Oil Soil as Oakland visits the heartland. Jacoby Brissett aims to keep the offense rolling against the Raiders. And before the Colts kick off in week four, we're getting you ready for game day right now on Colts 360. From the Huntington Bank Studio, this is Colts 360. The Colts boast back-to-back -back victories as they welcome the Oakland Raiders into Indy this weekend. The Colts have now won seven consecutive home games dating back to last season, and they'll look to keep that streak alive. Speaking of victories, that week three home opening victory is one we cannot see enough of. So here is the very best of the best, and there was certainly a lot of it. Let's go, Colts! Let's go, Colts! Let's go, Colts! Now, what are the Colts in for today against the Falcons? This is a team that's been known for their offense over the years with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. So with those two centerpieces and a variety of other weapons, this should be a great challenge for the Colts defense. Offensive drive of the game as the Colts go right to left. Jacoby Brissett out of the gun, throws right into the flat. The ball is caught by Paris Campbell. Wills out of a tackle. He's at the 35-yard line, drugged down from behind at the 34. Good job, Jacoby. There's the snap. The ball. The kick is on its way. It has the distance, and it is good. It's good. It clanked off the left upright, but it went through, and it's good. Brissett backs to throw. He's got time in the pocket coming near side down the far sideline or near sideline. It's caught by T.Y. Hilton and he takes a ferocious hit. Flags are down everywhere. Ricardo Allen popped T.Y. Hilton. Naeem Hines in the game. They fake a screen to him. Brissett throws wide open to the end zone. Caught Zach Pascal. Touchdown. Touchdown. I-N-D-Y. The first catch of the season for Zach Pascal in the end zone. And the Colts now lead it 9 0 with a minute 25 to go in the first quarter. Three receivers go left, two to, up top to the right side. That's the wide side of the field. Ryan backs to throw, steps up in the pocket, throws on field in the middle. It's intercepted inside the five yard line, and it's Clayton Gethers. The Colts play takeaway. And for Matt Ryan, that's his sixth interception of the season. Set play action on first down, steps up into the pocket, hit as he throws, checks it down, it's caught by Naeem Hines, makes a man miss, he's at the 10, and he's struck down to the nine yard line. Set out of the gun, rolls to the right side, looking, looking, throws, fires, it's caught, touchdown, T.Y., touchdown, I-N-D-Y. The Colts have absolutely dominated so far through 30 minutes. At halftime, it's Indianapolis 20, Atlanta 3. First down at the Colts 47 yard line. Matt Ryan, five step drop, looks right, launches it deep downfield, has a receiver wide open, catches it at the 20 yard line. That's Julio Jones. And he spun forward down to about the 13. A gain of 34. They're going to fake an end around. They throw up field, the ball is caught. Austin Hooper caught at the five yard line and he drops into the end zone for a touchdown. The tight end at Stanford finds Pater from 13 yards away. Matt Ryan fires his sixth touchdown pass of the season. Ryan out of the shotgun, backs to throw. He's got time, looks right, looks right, throws over the middle, and it's caught for it by Julio Jones for a first down inside Colts territory down to the 44 yard line. Come on, David! Ryan out of the shotgun, takes a snap, looks right, looks right, throws up field at the goal line, it's caught for a touchdown, it's Austin Hooper. His second receiving score today. And the Falcons have had the ball twice after halftime, and both times they put a touchdown on the board, and they're right back in it. This is a ball game now. It's 20 to 16 with 13.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Tight end left is Jack Doyle. They play action for set. He's gonna throw up field. It's wide open, caught by Zach Pascal. 20, cuts back the 10, and he's drunk forward, pushed forward to about the five yard line. A gain of 34 and a first down to Zach Pascal. First and goal upcoming for the Colts. 
Brissett hands off right side to Marlon Mack, stretching it out. He's at the five yard line, looking to dive for the pylon. Is he in? Is he in? Yes, he is! Touchdown, Marlon Mack! Touchdown, INDY! A four yard touchdown for Marlon Mack. And the Colts now lead it 26 to 17. Ball in the far hash. Ryan takes a shotgun snap, looking left, looking left, throws in the back of the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. That's Julio Jones. Hey, let's run the out of the ball, baby. They're restless, so are we. Punch them in the mouth. 4-11 to go in the game. On play action, rolling to the right side, it's Jacoby Brissett to Eric Ebron, past the 30-yard line, takes two tacklers with him, up to about the 34. Hold on, baby. Run hard. All between the hash marks, Brissett under center. On a counter right side, huge hole for Marlon Mack, 50, down the far sideline, 40. And he cuts back and he's gonna be drugged down at the 34 yard line. Brissett out of the gun, they throw it right side, it's caught by Jack Doyle, first down, 20, 15, and he goes down and he stays inbounds, slides up to the 14 yard line. That's a gain of 13, and Jack Doyle comes up with a huge catch, a first down for the Colts, and the Colts in week number three are victorious. They knock off the Atlanta Falcons 27 to 24, and for the first time since 2013, the Colts are two and one after three games of a season. Still ahead, Coach Reich shares his excitement for the second home opportunity in two weeks. He explains how the chemistry is evolving in his offense and what you can always expect when John Gruden brings his troops into enemy territory. That's next on Colts 360. Joined now by head coach Frank Reich. Coach, you're coming off back-to-back -back wins. You boasted that first home opening win of the season. Your team now has seven consecutive home victories going back to last season. What is the difference maker, biggest difference maker, playing at home, especially when you have the crowd so behind you like you had last week against Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say I was surprised, but it was loud in there, and it was really exciting. Our players were feeding off of it. You know, obviously from a communication standpoint, it makes it hard for the opposing defense when our crowd is going crazy, especially on third down for the opponent. So um, we just need to keep playing good football, give them things to cheer about, and uh, it certainly is a big advantage to us playing at home. Playing good football means playing disciplined football through the first three weeks of the season. The Colts, one of the least penalized teams in the league. When you play disciplined like you do and like you have thus far, what kind of ripple effect does that create? It's a big ripple effect. It's bigger than people think. And what we try to do is we try to show we try to show that to the players. Um, we show very specific examples of penalties that are called and not called. Um, and then when they are called, we try to show what impact it has on the game, both positively and negatively. And so we take it really serious. I give our players a lot of credit. We got really smart guys. They understand. They understand the impact that it makes. And uh, we, we but we can't take it for granted. We got to keep this up. On Sunday, Jacoby had such an impressive start, 16 straight passes that he completed. You've discussed a lot that the chemistry just continues to build between yourself and Jacoby and also Nick Sirianni and quarterbacks coach Marcus Brady. Just how much are you guys continuing to learn about one another to create the effort that he had last Sunday with two touchdowns and over 300 yards? Yeah, it is a group effort, it really is. And it starts obviously with Jacoby and his mindset and his preparation, and he does a phenomenal job. Uh, but Nick and Marcus, uh, and Brian Hoyer in the room, and Chad Kelly in the room. It's a dynamic room, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's just a lot of fun to work with these guys and there's good interaction, it's always give and take. Uh, Jacoby's great, he has a lot of input, a lot of opinions, but he also understands that hey, from a coaching perspective, we're working really hard, you know, late into the night trying to give a good plan. So there's a lot of receiving on his part too. So a uh, great dynamic, great, great uh, professional room to be in. 
You've spoken a lot about that collaboration, especially within your quarterback room in particular, between yourself, Coach Sirianni, Coach Brady, and then you mentioned Brian and Chad in there as well alongside Jacoby. Is that something that you experienced firsthand as a player that you found value in, or is that something more so that you grew an appreciation of maybe through your coaching tenure? Hmm. Yeah, no, actually I did experience that as a player. I was very engaged. Um, I even think back to my you know, Buffalo days with Jim Kelly in those days. I, I would always want to go in and have a lot of input, you know, have play suggestions. Uh, really, you talk to the coaches, you know they're quote unquote the authority figures, but you know you're in it together. And that's really the way we view it. We got a lot of trust and confidence in our players, so we want to create this collaborative culture. Um, and, and, it's, and it's a fun, fun working environment. And you can see that collaborative culture even on game day when you and Jacoby are interacting, whether it's him coming off the sidelines after a scoring drive or it's during a timeout and a period of discussion. You're both certainly locked in, but you can tell that you guys are both genuinely really having fun, even in high pressure situations. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, Jacoby does have, he's got a great sense of humor and, um, you know, he's, he's got an infectious smile, right? If I'm allowed to say that as a coach, you know, but he really does. And, uh, you know, and you just like to see a player relaxed and you can tell Jacoby's relaxed out there and the moment's never too big for him. It's always fun to be able to have a, have a smile, have a laugh out there in between series or during a timeout, uh, just to kind of loosen the moment for a second. And uh, he handles that really well. Each week it has seemed that there's a different playmaker emerging within your offense. In Tennessee, it was, you know, Paris Campbell. You also had Jordan Wilkins with that game-changing play that he had. Then last week, Zach Paschal, hmm. first target of the season, goes for a touchdown. How much fun? We're, just, we're talking a lot about fun here. Is it for you to have that much versatility and variety in your offense? We love it. And, uh, you know, we talk all the time about that room being an unselfish room. and. And believe me, like when we put that play in, the Zach's touchdown, originally, originally, I hate to say this, but we had T.Y. in that spot, okay? And we were going to put T.Y. in that spot. And uh, this is like, this is true confessions here. <laughs> and there was a day that T.Y. didn't practice, and Zach ran that play in practice, and he did it absolutely perfectly. And we're like, okay, we're going to have to take this one away from T.Y. and give it to Zach. Zach does all this blocking for us. He does all this other stuff. This one's going to Zach, and so you're happy. The guys are happy for each other. I mean, that's what's really fun to see. In regards to that play, I believe Eric Ebron was asked about it, and he said that you sometimes have what he called funky play calling. And I think he meant funky in a complimentary sense. <laughs> Would you agree with that? I sure hope so. Um, and really what it comes down to, I think what he's – my guess is what he's referring to is, hey, we want to be aggressive and fearless in our play calling because we have that much trust in those guys. Um, you know that to to make the plays and to make good decisions, um, and, and they're doing that. Now you know you never take that for granted. You got to you got to dial it in each week and figure out where you can be aggressive and, and be selective because you never want to. That can easily turn into a recklessness, and you don't want to be reckless. But you want us, you want the players and coaches to have that aggressive mindset, but also maintain the discipline. And they just feed off it with the confidence that you can see across that team as well no doubt I, I do think it I do think there is an element of uh, of energy and juice in it where it gets you fired up you feel like when you create a big play like whether it's Zach's Zach's two big plays the touchdown mm -hmm. and then the play in the fourth quarter that goes for a lot of yards to help us seal that victory um, I I just think it gives us a lot of energy you mentioned that T.Y. had missed practice leading up to Atlanta when we saw in the Falcons game, scored that touchdown. There were a few seconds left on the clock, and he went ahead and headed to the locker room after he scored. He proved last season that he could be limited in practice and still show up on game day. How much does that speak to just the resilience of T.Y. Hill? Yeah, I mean, it speaks to his toughness, number one, but his resilience and his mental attitude and the fact that even when he's not practicing, he's staying mentally tuned in to the game plan to completely understand what he's doing. He's a pro. It's not ideal. I mean, we want our guys to practice, but um, it's nice to know that, you know, if he goes a week and can't practice, we know he can still play winning football. Sunday was a tough day for injuries. We saw T.Y., then we saw Tyquan Lewis and Bleak Hooker, who actually came back in the game even after his injury. Now he's expected to be out for a few weeks. How difficult is that to see from Malik, given the fact that he's already battled through those injuries in the first two seasons of his NFL career? It's tough for Malik. He was really, you know, he's really been having a great year now. You know, this isn't a, this isn't a season-ending deal. So um, that's the good news. 
but uh, and credit to him for really coming back in. I mean, I don't think any of us knew that it was that serious. And so uh, hopefully he'll heal up quick and, and we'll get him back. But he was having a good year. And like you said, Larry, after a couple years of having to fight off injuries, tough break for him, but he'll bounce back. It sounds like that Cardi Willis will step up. I mean, it'll be by, by committee, as always, but certainly getting the biggest chunk of that task is going to be Kari. He had a great game in Tennessee. How confident are you? What has he proven in his ability to fill that void of Malik Hooker on that interim basis? Yeah, I mean, we're very confident in Kari. As you said, he will get the bulk of the work. Um, he's just shown a lot of maturity, but not just maturity and intelligence, which he has lots of both of those. But good playmaking ability. You know, this guy's tough. He's a good tackler. He's a good cover guy. So, you know, you want a guy back there who you can trust. Um, that's a very key position. And uh, I, we, even though Kari's a rookie, we feel like he fits that mold. Looking to your opponent on Sunday in the Oakland Raiders, they certainly have a good quarterback in Derek Carr. Regardless of their personnel that they bring in, what do you always know to expect from a John Gruden coached football team? You know, he's obviously been around the block. He, he and he, He's an excellent coach, the well-coached team. Um, he knows a lot about our defensive scheme. You know, when he won the Super Bowl um, as a coach for the Tampa Bay, they were playing this scheme. Um, they were playing this scheme, so he went up against it in practice. So I'm sure he'll have a good game plan dialed up. They did fairly well against us offensively last year when we played them, so it'll be a good challenge for our defense, um, you know, going up against a team that has formidable weapons, a quarterback, who can be very dangerous uh, and what we need to focus on is just playing good defense and, and really getting pressure on the passer you know making that you know really affecting that quarterback as much as we can we'll also look for the crowd to be affecting them as well bringing the juice to no the doubt. soil stadium on sunday coach thanks so much for the time thank you still ahead on colts 360 a conversation with the captain clayton gathers discusses the unique dynamic within the colts defense stepping up the secondary in Malik Hooker's absence, and how he's battled through injury in preparation to be better than ever in 2019. More ahead on Colt 360. Back now on Colts 360, fresh off the practice field, Clayton Gathers, you again this season wearing the seat on your chest as one of the team captains for the 2019 season, the second time that you've been elected captain by your teammates. How much of a responsibility do you embrace with that title that you have alongside four of your teammates? First and foremost is an honor. Um, just to know what they think about you in the locker room, you know, just how they act around you and how they respond to you is an honor, but you know, it, it, it makes it easy because we have a lot of leaders in that locker room. So it makes, it makes being a captain easy, but you know, it's just, just to be around the guys is, is a good feeling. Also a good feeling when you get an interception against the Atlanta Falcons, what were they showing you? What were you seeing from that Falcons offense that created that opportunity for what was a strong, I mean, a huge play at that point of the game on Sunday? Well, yeah, so, you know, Matt Ryan, good quarterback and they got a good receiving core. So uh, earlier that game, they hit us down the seam uh, in the middle of the field. And then I saw it again. I said, I know he's not about to do it. And then he threw it and I was like, oh, I just got to make a play. Just catch the ball. That's, that's what I was thinking. Just catch the ball. Don't try to get no yards right now. Just look it in. And that's what happened. And that was a huge play. It took points off the board. We saw last season that when you guys would force those turnovers defensively, that Jacoby Brissett would rush down for the celebratory end zone picture that you guys would have. Obviously, he's a little busy now on, on yes, game day, he so he's not <laughs> able to do that. Has he found a different way to celebrate with you guys? And uh, are we getting Brian Hoyer involved in that? Is he going to carry the torch maybe with that celebration for Jacoby? I, I, I don't know. Um... We should see. Um, you know, I think some of the defensive guys should go to him and, and ask him and see what he says. Uh, but, you know, it's fun. It, it brings a lot of energy. So I'm, I'm just happy we do that and just keep having turnovers, you know. How much of a difference does it make at home as well, playing at Lucas Oil? You guys have back-to-back -back weeks of doing that defensively, especially after we saw that raucous atmosphere, that hostile territory that you had in Tennessee. Being back at home, how much of just a, an opportunity is that for you guys? Oh, it's, it's huge. Um, it's an advantage for us. So, uh, you know, last week Kenny said something that resonated with the whole team. He's like, you know, we at home, the swagger is different. And then the fans bringing the energy, you know, it just all set in. 
and it was great. You know, we enjoyed it, and just to be back at home to feel that again, um, you know, it's huge. One thing that has been fun, a, a new tradition, I don't know if it's new this season or maybe carried over from last year, but on Fridays, if you notice in the meeting rooms, a lot of guys are walking around, walking through the hallways, wearing different throwback jerseys. Yeah. You had a very significant throwback jersey last week. What was the significance and maybe what did you have to go to, the links you had to go through to get that special jersey to pay homage to, to your teammate Malik Hooker? Yeah, so Malik, that's my guy. Um, I thought, you know, doing the throwback jerseys, I was like, hey, you know, I want to do a real throwback, another throwback. And I was like, why don't I do some of the guys on the team? You know, uh, Malik was a great basketball player, you know, so I was just, had to make a couple calls, uh, talk to his coach, <laughs> and um, got it sent here. And that was, and just the look on his face when he was like, oh, y'all, how did you get that? I don't even have one. <laughs> so uh, it was good. Um, got some more coming. So stay tuned. Oh, you keep raising the bar. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> You've battled some injuries. I know the knee and the neck previously in your career. How much has your family played a role just in keeping you motivated and encouraged? And this now being probably the best you've felt in a number of seasons uh, at this point in the year. Family played a huge role. I'm, I'm big on family. Um, and you know, one thing they always tell me, you know, your current situation is just, it's not forever. You know, uh, so it's going to be some trials, it's going to be some tribulations, but you just got to keep pushing. And, you know, them being strong for me, you know, just help me to be strong and just pass it along. You know, so now, you know, if I see someone going through something, I know I can speak on it, you know, from experience. And I think that just helps, you know, everyone. And that family continues to grow. You have that second baby coming this fall, so congratulations Thank you. on that. Clayton, really appreciate the time. For our Colt 360 crew, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you right back here next week.